In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Traconus, and Lyasam, ruler of Albaline, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and the flesh shall see, shall, shall see the salvation of God. Seth, I want to thank you. You got stuck with the hardest passage in the Bible, I think. <laughs> and you did a beautiful job. <laughs> I don't know if I could have read all those words. <laughs> When I think of this season of Advent, I automatically think of a time of preparation. Now many of us in this room, we've been in the process of preparing for quite a while. We've been decorating our homes, we've been shopping, we've been... And being with our families. Okay, yep. Being with our families and preparing menus. That was next in the notes. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I want to talk about preparing in a different way this morning because while all these things are great and fun and we get excited about them, the real reason for preparing in this season is knowing that soon, we will celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will welcome a king. Now before Jesus' ministry began on this earth, and even before the world would recognize his name, God raised up John the Baptist to be the voice of one crying in the wilderness. It would be John who would announce the coming of Messiah. It would be John who would introduce the world to Jesus. Now John was the son of Elizabeth and Zechariah. And if you recall, there's a beautiful scene in the scriptures there in Matthew where Mary, who is now pregnant, goes to visit with Elizabeth, who is also pregnant with child. And when Mary arrives in the home of Elizabeth and greets her, that little baby John leaped for joy in his mother's womb. To think that Jesus and John our earthly cousins, and to think that his cousin would introduce Jesus to the world and prepare the way for his coming. Now, I've often wondered what it would be like to live in those days, especially in Israel. Could it be that many of the people had given up on the hope of ever seeing Messiah come? After all, it had been hundreds of years since the prophets of old first talked about the coming of the king. Is it possible that many of them had given up hope of ever seeing the Messiah? But then something happened. All of a sudden, it seems that this man who wore strange clothes and 
had an even stranger diet emerges on the scene. And he is preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. It didn't take long for him to create a following. Some would call them his disciples. And as he was proclaiming good news to the people he encountered and calling them to repentance and baptism, John the Baptist made certain that everyone understood that someone greater than he was about to emerge on the scene. In fact, it would be the Messiah. It would be the Son of God. So perhaps it wasn't so bad living in that day, considering that John speaks with such urgency. The people understand that something is imminent. It's going to take place very soon. <coughs> and even now, John continues to prepare our hearts as we look forward to the celebration of his birth. But it raises a question, I think an important question for us. How are we preparing for his coming? How are we preparing for his coming? Think about that for a moment. Now, there are many ways that we can prepare. I'm going to suggest a couple to you today. One of the ways that we might prepare is to go back and reread the birth narratives as seen in Matthew and Luke's Gospels. And they're not hard to find. If you can find chapters 1 and 2, you've got it made. <laughs> But sometimes I just love to go back and reread those passages because in so doing, it transports my mind and my heart to a different place. A place where I can imagine what it must have been for those shepherds to come in out of the fields and gaze upon the baby Jesus lying in a manger. It causes me to imagine what it might have been like to witness the arrival of the three kings bearing their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Such imagery really helps us to focus on the real reason for this season. Or can you imagine with me for a moment what it would have been like standing there in the fields and all of a sudden hearing the angel choir singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I get excited when I think about these things because it brings me back to focus on what's really important in this season and what is of most valuable to us, and that is the celebration of his birth, the celebration of his coming. Now, don't get me wrong, I love getting presents and seeing all the decorations just as much as you do. I really do. I get excited about that. But I also know that Christmas means so much more. That it is a time to prepare our hearts for the celebration of Christ's birth. And I love that. I love doing that. But there's something else that we might want to consider this season. Because this is a time of giving, I would encourage all of us to do something selfless. Now, it doesn't have to be big or grand or enormous in any way, shape, or form. 
It's just about doing something without the expectation of anything in return. Maybe you know someone who is sick or has been struggling with health. And you could prepare a simple meal and take it to them. That might be worth more than the most elaborate gift you could give. Just to show them you love them. Something that simple. Or maybe you can think of a friend that you've had for a long time and it's been a long time since you've seen them. Drop in on them. Surprise them. They'll be glad to see you and you'll be glad to see them. Doesn't cost much to do that, does it? And yet, it might be a way of expressing the love of Christ to someone that you haven't seen in a long time. I read once about a little boy and girl, their brothers and sister, brother and sister, that uh, wanted to do something special for their grandmother during the winter months. And so they were too small to write the note in the card, but they had their mom write this note, and they made up this card. They drew the pictures on it and everything, and they made up this little card for their grandmother, and inside the card it said, good for one free scraping of snow from your sidewalk. I don't know these kids, but if we get snow, they can come my way <laughs> any day, right? Now that's nothing big or elaborate. Simple, isn't it? But I wouldn't be surprised if that grandmother was more thrilled about that card than all the other gifts she might have received. It's not about doing something big or grand. It's about doing something from the heart. That's what this season is about. And that's how we prepare for the coming of the King. In doing so, we will all experience the love of God in a new way and the joy of this season. What are you doing? What are we doing to prepare for the coming of the King? What are we doing? Perhaps the best thing we can do in all this season is to simply give God our hearts. Give God our hearts. That's the best gift you can give. Because when you give God your heart, God is going to bless you in ways you never imagined. And you might even find yourself doing some things you never imagined. And all of it for the glory of God. And to that I say amen. amen. As we sing this morning, I want you to come and pray. This is a special season of the year. What are you doing to prepare for the coming of the Lord? It's a time in which I hope all of us are preparing in our hearts and giving of ourselves to Almighty God. And so as we sing this great Advent song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, I invite you and encourage you to come and pray. Give God your heart. Give God your love. And say, Lord, help me to prepare for the coming of the King. Let's take a moment in silence.